In this video, we will cover using Excel to calculate mode, median, and mean for a string of numbers, a simple frequency distribution, and grouped frequency distributions. We'll start with a string of numbers. The first thing that your textbook recommends is to rearrange a set of numbers from highest to lowest. To do this in Excel, we select the row or column that contain the scores and then use the sort and filter option to either sort from smallest to largest or largest to smallest, which is what the textbook recommends. Now that we have the scores in an order, you can follow the textbook instructions to calculate the mode, median, and mean. However, Excel also has functions for calculating each of these quantities. Beginning with the mode, if we click on the insert function button and search for mode, the first result you'll get is described as returning the most frequently occurring value in a range of data, which is what the mode is. So we'll select mode and then click and drag a box around our set of scores. As you can see, it returned a value of 9, which is the most frequently occurring score in this set. Similarly, if we search for median in the insert function search box, you can see there is a median option as well, so we'll select that and again drag a box around our data, select OK, and again our value is 9. The fourth score in the set is the position of the median, and as we can see, that score is 9. Finally, for the mean, we will actually search for average. And as you can see, the average function in Excel returns the arithmetic mean of its arguments. Again, we'll select our scores, and it returns a mean of 9.4. Unfortunately, those Excel functions are not applicable to frequency distributions. So we'll have to use a more traditional approach to finding measures of central tendency for distributions. Here's a simple frequency distribution from the previous chapter of the textbook, and we will use this example to calculate measures of central tendency. The mode is simply the score that has the highest associated frequency. So if we look at the frequency column, we can see the highest frequency is 11, which is associated with the score of four, or four drinks. Instead of typing four next to the mode, I'll type an equal sign and then click on the cell that contains the mode. This way, I can double click on the mode and see where that number comes from. For the median, the first thing we'll do is determine the position of the median score. The formula for the position of the median is n plus 1 divided by 2. In this case, the position of the median is 45, or Rn, plus 1 divided by 2. Notice I put parentheses around the n plus 1 part of the equation. This is because, due to the order of operations, division is performed before addition. If I had not added the parentheses, Excel would take the n and then add 1 over 2, or 1 half, and so it would give us a result of 45.5. Because we want Excel to do the sum, or the addition, before the division, we have to put parentheses around that part of the equation. So the position of the median is the 23rd observation. The easiest way to find where that observation lies is by utilizing a cumulative frequency column. 
So I will quickly create a cumulative frequency column for our data. As we can see, observation 15 through 25 fall within the category 4. Since 23, the position of our median falls between 15 and 25. Our median is 4 drinks. Finally, we'll calculate the mean. In order to calculate a mean for a simple frequency distribution, we utilize this formula. The mean is equal to the sum of the frequencies of a score times the score divided by n. We have the frequencies and the scores. And the first thing we have to do is to multiply those two things together. So I'll create a new column that is the frequencies times the scores. In this first row, I will type an equal sign and then select the cell containing the frequency for that row times the cell containing the number of drinks. I'll then click on the lower right corner and fill in the remaining rows. The next step is to sum all of those products. So I will enter a function select sum and highlight that column. This number represents the numerator of this expression. The only thing left is to divide that sum by the total number of cases, or n. So I type in an equal sign select that sum divided by our n, which is 45. Measures of central tendency for grouped frequency distributions are calculated in much the same way as for simple frequency distributions. For our mode, we again find the value with the highest frequency. In this case, 17 respondents had between four and five drinks. In order to present a single number, we use the midpoints. So the mode for this set of data is equal to 4.5, or the midpoint of the interval with the greatest frequency. The mean utilizes a formula very similar to the formula for simple frequency distributions. The only difference is, instead of using x or a score, we use the midpoint, or m. So I will create a column for the frequency times the midpoint. Multiply the frequency times the midpoint for the first row, and then copy that formula to the remaining rows. Then I will sum that column. Again, this value represents the numerator of this equation. The final step is to divide by the sample size. So our mean is equal to the sum of the frequencies times the midpoints divided by n, or our sample size. The median is a somewhat larger and more complex formula than for our previous examples. It is very similar to the percentile rank formula. In fact, if we were to calculate the 50th percentile rank for any frequency distribution, we would get the same result as we would from using this formula. This median formula utilizes 
the lower limit of the critical interval, n, or sample size, the cumulative frequency below the critical interval, the frequency within the interval, and the interval size. The first step is to determine the critical interval. Again, the formula for the position of the median is equal to n plus 1 divided by 2. So the median is the 23rd observation in the data. Looking to our cumulative frequency column, we can see that observations 15 through 31 fall within the 4 to 5 drinks interval. So this is our critical interval. I've already calculated the lower limit and the interval size. And so we actually have all of the information we need to calculate the median. I'm going to calculate this in steps. So the first thing I'll do is determine the numerator of this expression, n divided by 2 minus the cumulative frequency below the critical interval. To calculate this in Excel, I type an equal sign, and then within parentheses, I'll select the n divided by 2 minus 14, or the cumulative frequency below the critical interval. Next, I will divide that value by the frequency of the critical interval, which equals our previously calculated numerator divided by the frequency in our critical interval. This gives us the expression within the parentheses. The next step is to multiply by the interval size, or our previously calculated value times the i for the critical interval. The last step is to add the lower limit of the critical interval to this large expression. The median equals the lower limit of the critical interval plus the expression we just calculated.